I teach a 200 level course called Introduction to Wildlife and Fisheries Management. And for that course, I've developed a course assignment that allows students to engage in a camera trapping project run by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. The objective of the DNR Snapshot Wisconsin project is to gather wildlife data using the power of citizen science. It is a statewide monitoring program that relies on volunteers to host trail cameras throughout the year. Photos from the cameras are uploaded to the Zooniverse Citizen Science web platform, and other volunteers then go through the photos to identify the animals pictured. Each camera takes three photos when it is triggered. These three photos collectively make up a photo set. After registering for Snapshot Wisconsin, students start classifying photo sets. This is what the classify page looks like. On the left is pictured one of the three images from this particular photo set. You can toggle among the three photos simply by clicking on the buttons underneath the photo. The requirement for each classification is to identify the species present in the photos and to record specific types of information addressed in questions. This photo shows a raccoon. The student would click on the raccoon in the species list on the right, which then advances to the next page. There they would answer a couple questions in this particular example right here. After answering the questions, the student clicks on identify and then the done button to move on to the next photo set. However, before clicking on the done button, the student saves the photo set to a collection folder, which they set up in advance. I require students to save a minimum of 60 photo sets to their collection. Each of those photo sets will then have some data that they extract from it. Because all the student collections are publicly visible, it allows me to check each student's progress as they are doing their classifications. For this project, I require the students to obtain information on the following variables shown in this Excel worksheet. Each row represents the information from one photo set. So I have the species identified, the number of individuals in the photos, the ID which is given to each photo set, the date the photos were taken at, the time, and the county that the camera was set up in. This is an example of a student's collection. And so in this case, we have eight different photo sets that were saved in this particular collection. So they obtain this information from the metadata available for each photo set that they saved in their collection. So by simply clicking on the I symbol underneath the photo for each photo set, it will open up this metadata window. And you can see that date is there, time, county, and subject ID. After all students have turned in their individual worksheets containing the 60 rows of data, I combine all the worksheets to generate a single worksheet for the analysis and summary part of the assignment. I add two additional columns of information, month and hour, which represents the 24 hourly periods for each day. I give the students this final Excel data set and a document that outlines the analyses they must complete and some questions to answer. Here are just a few examples of results from last year. In this first example, students generated a pivot table to determine the total number of photo sets classified for the various species observed and rank the top 10 most observed species. So you can see in this case, deer ranked number one, raccoon was second, and then a group is collectively squirrels and chipmunks came in number three. In the second example, they graphed the frequency of deer observations by month. So you can see here, there was higher frequency of deer observations in January, February, March, then it dropped off, and then it started going back once you got into September. In this last example, they produced a graph to assess changes in raccoon activity over the 24 hour period of time. So each of the bars right here represents a one hour period. So you can see higher activity early in the morning, drops off during the middle part of the day, and then it picks up again later in the day. Results from an anonymous survey I conducted last year showed that a high percentage of students found this project to be a useful educational experience, 
89% of the participants indicated that. And they enjoyed doing the animal classifications part of the project. So 92% of them enjoyed doing the, the classification part. 